Many years later, when I asked Anamalai Swami about this life-changing hug, this is what he told me. One day, I went to Bhagavan's bathroom to help him with his morning bath. Madhava Swami and I, his other attendant, gave him his usual oil massage. When the bath was over, Madhava Swami asked, Bhagavan, people who take ganja lihaham, which is an Ayurvedic medicine that is a principal ingredient that inside is cannabis, these people experience some kind of ananda, some kind of bliss. What is the nature of that ananda? Is it the same ananda the scriptures speak of? Bhagavan replied that eating ganja is a very bad habit. Then laughing loudly, he came over to me, hugged me and exclaimed, Ananda, 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 Ananda. This is how these people who eat ganja behave. It was not a brief hug. Madhava Swami told me later that he held me tightly for two minutes. After the first few seconds, I completely lost all awareness of my body and the world. Initially, there was a feeling of happiness and bliss, but this soon gave way to a state in which there were no feelings and no experiences though I did not lose consciousness. I just ceased to be aware of anything that was going on around me. I remained in that state for about 15 minutes. When I recovered my usual worldly consciousness, I was standing alone in the bathroom. Madhava Swami and Bhagavan had long since left for breakfast. I had not seen them open the door or leave nor had I heard the breakfast bell. This experience completely changed my life. I knew that my working life at Ramana Ashram had come to an end. I knew that from now on, I would be living outside the ashram and spending most of my time in meditation. And the very next day, I told Bhagavan, please bless me. I am going to live at Polakotu, the sadhu community. Bhagavan then came close to Anamalai Swami and blessed him with a brief light hug. The choice of the place of Polakotu, the design of his cottage, what he was doing every day, what was happening, he reported everything to Bhagavan. Bhagavan visited him almost every day, guiding him spiritually. Then the time came when Bhagavan felt that Anamalai Swami should be established totally in the self. And so he advised Anamalai Swami with these words, you are now established in your inner poise. There is no need for you to come to Ramana Ashramam, even for Darshan. Do not move from your place in Palakotu and go towards the road. You are free to walk on the hill. Once, when Anamalai Swami did not have any food, Bhagavan told him to go into the forest, cut leaves of a particular herb, make some gravy with it, and eat it with a little rice, which was always provided for him. Bhagavan never instructed anyone to eat this or not eat this. For Anamalai Swami alone, everything was by his instruction. To many other devotees, including his brother, Bhagavan specified even which street to go and beg for food. For Anamalai Swami, he did not do this. Our scriptures say that there are two ways of living either like a honeybee that goes from flower to flower gathering food, or like the python which does not move but swallows food that comes its way. For Anamalai Swami, Bhagavan did suggest the python method. 
He did not even allow him to go and beg. Instead, he saw to it that everything was provided. Established in the self, Anamalai Swami started teaching self-inquiry. A misconception prevalent at that time was that self-inquiry was only for intellectuals and scholars, and that laymen did not have the capacity for alertness to turn their attention inwards and to do it. Anamalai Swami taught even ordinary village folks how to do self-inquiry. It is very thrilling how he taught them. He would tell them, since you say that you have forgotten your real self, the only way is to go back to it. If you keep the light on all the time, darkness can never enter your room. Even if you open the door and invite the darkness to come in, it cannot enter. Darkness is just the absence of light. In the same way, the mind is a self-inflicted area of darkness in which the light of the true self has been deliberately shut off. So go back to your own true self. Somebody said that since self-inquiry was very difficult, he was wondering whether he should practice some other path like bhakti or karma yoga devotion or service, and then eventually come to self-inquiry. Anamalai Swami was very categorical when he said to him, if you have some interest in the path of self-inquiry, you should follow it, even if you feel that you are not very good at it. If you want to do self-inquiry effectively and properly, you should stick to that method alone. Other methods may be good in their own right, but they are not good as preparations for self-inquiry. If you are serious about becoming a good violin player, you take lessons from a good teacher and practice as much as you can. If you encounter some difficulties, you do not switch over to clarinet for a few months. You stay with your chosen instrument and keep practicing till you get it right. See the simple but vivid example he uses. The best preparation for self-inquiry is the practice of self-inquiry. Even now there are villagers who were guided by Anamalai Swami and practicing self-inquiry. (laughs) 